every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. A very good evening to you and welcome to Core TV Prime Time News. I am Nenna Nyama. In our major story tonight, President Muhammad Buhari Ernest, three soldiers who sustained serious injuries in ongoing operations against Boko Haram with the Purple Hearts Medal for Gallantry. Also in this program, a federal high court in Abuja summoned the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Stamalami to explain the security siege on the Abuja residence of former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki. And Inspector General of Police Solomon Arase unveiled the new look of Special Anti Robbery Squad at the launch of the Police Complaint Response Unit at the Force Headquarters, Abuja. And outside Nigeria, three Palestinians have died from bullet wounds inflicted by Israeli troops, and two Israeli settlers have been shot dead in an attack as unrest continues to grip Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. President Muhammad Buhari and three soldiers who sustained serious injuries in ongoing operations against Boko Haram with the Purple Hearts Medal for Gallantry during a morale boosting visit to the Nigerian military in Adamawa State. At the confirmant ceremony, President Buhari said the honor to the three wounded soldiers was an appreciation of their heroic contribution to the ongoing effort by the Nigerian armed forces to end the Boko Haram insurgency. Those decorated with the Purple Hearts Medal are Lance Corporal Kenneth Kulug, who was wounded in a battle with Boko Haram at Maga Bridge near Mad Madagali. Others are Private Anthony Sunday, was wounded in a battle with Boko Haram at Gubla in Adamawa State, and Private Danga Omaru, who sustained multiple gunshot injuries to both sides at Maga Bridge near Mad Madagali, accompanied by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tsuku Burutai. The President also presented Operation Lafayette Dole Medals to other four soldiers. The Operation Lafayette Dole Medal is presented to men and officers of the Nigerian Armed Forces who have served gallantly in theatre of operations. The North beyond six months. A federal high court in Abuja summoned the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, to appear in court on Monday to explain the security siege on the Abuja residence of former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki. Justice Adeni Adimola issued the statement following complaints by Dasuki's lawyers and a court order following the former NSA travel for medical treatment has been flouted by operators of the Department of State Service. Prosecution counsel Shuaibu Labrin had earlier declined to confirm the presence of DSS in Dasuki's Asoko Rabuja home but admitted that he was being investigated in another money laundering matter. Judiciary correspondent Basi Lukafo has more in this report presented from our studios. The former NSC will still wait till next week to know if his request for DSS to vacate his house located on 13 John Kadea Street as Soko will be granted. Dasuke had earlier secured the court order to travel abroad for medical treatment, but the order was not carried out due to the siege laid by the DSS operatives on his house. The security agency has claimed that Dasuki was invited for questioning by an investigative panel, but he refused to honor the invitation. 
of the hearing of the application, Justice Ademola frowned at the security seat late after he had made an order allowing the former NSC to go abroad for treatment of an unknown ailment. The, he thereafter ordered the AGF to appear before him and explain why Dasuki was still at home despite an order that was issued on November 3rd for him to embark on a three-week medical trip to the United Kingdom. It should be amended and also to draw the attention of the court to the fact that the orders have not been obeyed. But the court in its wisdom has now invited the Attorney General of the Federation, being a very serious issue on disobedience of court order. So we say no more until when the Attorney General, who is a very responsible officer of the law, will be here. Tasuki is facing criminal charges bordering on unlawful possession of firearms and money laundering preferred against him by the federal government. Former Governor of Kaduna State, Valara Bey Moussa, has shown his support to the recent measure of ministries by President Muhammad Buhari because it is based on realities and ground. He said this while speaking to Court TV News in an interview that the President should be praised for coming out to tell the people the blunt truth that the country, unlike others, who will continue to take bonds and loans, which is impoverishing the future. Amina Nebi has more in this report presented from our studios. Nigerians haven't waited for over five months in anticipation of ministers. When they finally get it, this was as one of the old Kaduna State Governor, Balarabe Musa, has commended the decision taken by President Mohamed Buhari. He believes that the recklessness in the country's economy, championed by the capitalist economy, has drained the country to almost a point of no return. Ought to be someone who has record of performance from which uh, his suitability can be judged. In other words, he must have participated in public activities uh, at the national level so that it is easy to assess his suitability and you can assess somebody's suitability from his record of performance. Speaking on the ministry appointment, he may be clear that some ministers are not known in their various communities. He says, looking at the wreckages and damages on ground, it's enormous and it would be a point of deception to think that all is well. According to him, three out of the numbers inaugurated into the president's cabinet have record of performance and credibility. Out of the 37 so far announced, excluding the president himself, because I understand he is taking the petroleum ministry, so out of the 36, at least 24 ought to be people with clear record of performance, record of credibility in public service up to the national level. And Nigerian and civil servants believe that there is mixed feeling during the nomination. As some of the ministers were given the position of another, especially in a situation where one occupied three serious and ethic position. You can see there's a lot of uh, mixed feelings in the appointment. You know, expectations of people and even the ministers we are, didn't go their way. But then uh, they are there, they are educated, they are learned, they, have, they are exposed, they are politicians, so they could be able to fit in into whichever ministry that, uh, that is, was assigned to them by the president, uh, Muhammad Buhari. They urge Nigerians to become now in an area of security of lives and property will be secured under the administration but Nigerians should brace up for tough economic times. The former Minister of Aviation, Femi Fani Kayadi, has accused the APC-led administration of being selective in its fight against corruption. Fani Kayadi stated this today when he appeared at the Federal High Court in Abuja to show solidarity with former National Security Advisor Samba Dasuki, who is facing criminal charges and money laundering.
The former minister have expressed confidence that rule of law in the country has made it possible for Nigerians to seek redress when their rights are violated. Well, I've come here to express solidarity uh, with um, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, the former National Security Advisor, um, and I am outraged, frankly, by the way in which he has been treated. And I believe that it's important that all of us that work together, particularly during the presidential campaign, even though we lost the election, it's important that we should stand by our own. Um, I think that it's a little bit disconcerting when um, security agents camp at somebody's gate um, and when court orders are breached. And I'm happy that in this country we have the rule of law and people can come to court when their rights are being violated and then let the court determine what the truth is. So I'm here to stand in complete solidarity with him uh, and also um, my learned colleagues that are standing for him. And um, it's very important for him and all those that are being marginalized, criminalized, persecuted and intimidated in this country today to know that they are not alone. Um, some of us have been through this for a period of time, almost seven years I went through uh, persecution in this country and you know that's when you know who your real friends are and there are many of us that stand with him he's a good man he's a man that we have absolute faith in he's a man with a future and um, we stand strong with him and that's why I'm here today as the president of Nigeria Muhammad Buhari has inaugurated his cabinet charging them to be more proactive in fulfilling the change mantra of the administration the state of the nation remains an issue of discuss as more reactions continue to show the agitation for seven states of Biafra our correspondent Emmanuel Ajayi now reports in his inaugural speech as he assigns portfolios to new ministers the president of Nigeria, Momodo Buhari, promised Nigerians that his administration will reduce the poverty level of the nation to tackle insurgency to enhance better safety of the citizenry. We intend to pursue policies that will generate massive employment for millions of our youth. We shall also continue with greater determination and focus to pursue our goals of ensuring improved security for our country and its citizens and without letting up on our fight against corruption. Our commitment to defeat Boko Haram and all the threats it constitutes remains as strong as ever. Despite the promises made by the President, there has been more agitations for some Nigerians who believe that deplorable state of the nation is one of the reasons they are calling for a sovereign state of Biafra. All Nigeria's youth, we are suffering. The federal government of Nigeria fail us. We don't have, we don't have our, our future. We don't have future. We, every day by day, in radio and in television, we hear billions of dollars. And not in Naira. Dollars, when you convert dollars to Naira, billions of dollars to Naira, Yes, it is it, it, trillions of naira, and yet all this money, where are they? About the rally which is going on in the country, and it's what we want. We need that very freedom because we have seen that we are not a one Nigeria, and any country who have fought civil war, after after 30 years, they are free to go on their own, and we are more than the 30 years now where we fight this uh, civil war. Why can't us, why can't they allow us to get our freedom? Look at my age now. I still do salary work. I collect 30,000 naira. They are using me like a, like a cow. We don't want more Nigeria again. We want Nigeria to divide. We, we, me, me, I'm, I'm an OPC. I'm one of the, the commandants for OPC. Yes, we support, we support uh, Biafra. Let, let them go. We, we are going to declare our dual republic. Six months after, if there is no any change, anything can happen in this country. Because people are suffering. We cannot continue like this. These are the people that they are ruling out in 1979. They are the same people, set of people who are there. For these Nigerians, they believe that the call for a sovereign state will not solve the challenges bedeviling the nation. Talking of Biafra now, it's not one matter. It's the problem of this country that matter, and the problem of this country concerns everybody. The way Igbo are feeling, they are feeling bad about this country. The same thing we are feeling. Even the Northern people, the same thing they are feeling Nigeria is not good. So if Biafra now say, because Nigeria has problem now, that they are going, but when Nigeria is in Modumodo, they no go. When they give Nigeria to Azikwe as the first president of this country, they no go. 
when they give uh, when I go Rossi do all this nine bring all that war that called Biafra is not Nigeria problem. Uh, but the children of nowadays they believe that that Biafra fight is because of the problem of Nigeria that make evil people to fight. Now between sixty seven and seventy, Ojuku ran away. Biafra does not pay. I believe in one Nigeria. One Nigeria right from the days of uh, Lord Lugard. So Nigeria should be one. Nigeria should not divide. As the administration of President Mwadubari promises more dividends of democracy, it is expected that the security arm of government will leave no stone unturned in order to nip this in board. Emmanuel Ajayi, Call TV News, Lagos. We'll take a break now with time with more stories. Just stay with us. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV. Live a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24 hour news station. Some pundits believe that as long as the political system is driven by selected few, corruption may be difficult to fight. You should be careful about what you say. I am not the only politician. Even if I wrong, if I wrong anyone. Thanks for Arena episode at 9.15 p.m. and a repeat broadcast every Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Glad to have you back. You're still watching Core TV Primetime News, a top reminder of our stories. President Muhammad Buhari and us three soldiers who sustained Serious injuries and ongoing operations against Boko Haram with the Purple Hearts Medal for Gallantry. Also, a Federal High Court in Abuja summoned the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, to explain the security siege and the Abuja resident and former National Security Advisor, Sambo Desuki. Inspector General of Police Solomon Arasi unveils the new look of Special anti robbery Squad at the launch of the Police Complaint Response Unit at the Force Headquarters, Abuja. For more of our news stories and information, join us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. On Twitter at Core TV News NG. And on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Core TV Live Space News. The special anti robber squad of the police is now to have a new identity. Unlike the previous appearance in civilian clothing, SAS operatives will be kitted in all black uniform. The Inspector General of Police unveiled the new look SAS at the launch of the police complaint responding to the force headquarters, Abuja. Bukola Feni has more in his report presented from Master News. These are SARS operatives in the new kit the police authorities are introducing. They are putting up a mock exercise to outline the new phase of the elite anti-robbery squad that Nigerians are expected to be accustomed to soon. Inspector General Arasi said it is part of measures to modernize the operation of SARS across the country. He added that the police intend introducing less lethal weapons to the operation of the elite team. These, he explains, is because of the negative impression SARS operatives have generated in the course of carrying out their duties in many parts of the country. In days to come, the weapon profile of SARS will be reduced towards the engagement of less lethal technologies weapon system, such as electromuscular disruption technology, 
usually called tasers or stun guns, for components of their operation to reduce incidence of fatalities associated with the application of leather weapons. Our projection is that within the next one year, the entire SARS in all police formation would have undergone the rebranding program and their mode of operation, dress code, orientation, ethics, and quality of service would have been subsumed under the rule of law and aligned to the expectations of the citizens. The police also introduced series of lines and social media platforms for the public to reach the authorities on the conduct um, of its personnel. Um, this is with the launch to, uh, of its complaint uh, response unit. In every police station in Nigeria, any police station you get into in Nigeria now, you are going to have this one hung at the police station. It, it has all the numbers that you can call. It also has all the social media that have been activated for you to interface with us. For now, only a few SARS operatives will be cited in the new kits. But the authorities say within one year, all the policemen attached to the elite team would be properly kitted in the new outfit. <laughs>
has been given out to Oshun State Government to clear the mess which she has created for herself about three months ago. There are insinuations that Oshun's bailout fund has been fixed in three different banks from specified months while pensioners are dying as, and are suffering untold hardship. Is this our own style of anti-corruption? Is this change we are shouting about? The call now is on well-meaning Nigerians home and abroad to plead to the federal government on our behalf to use the bailout fund to pay all our standing pension allowances, areas, and gratuity as specified by the federal government. When we apply for bailout, we put all the outstanding pensions, gratuity, contributed pension, and things like that into it. But what we were given was far, far less than 50% of our requests. In spite of that, we ensure that pensioners were paid once we pay salary. Again, I want to tell you that we've paid July, June, July, August salary, and we have paid in line with that the pensioners as well. That's based on the agreement we would labor. So it, will not, it is not correct for anybody to have accused this government of uh, not utilizing bailout. We'll take another break now, return with more stories in business, foreign, and sports. To stay with us. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or talk crazy? Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. News making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals, taking looters that are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Excuse me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is that will bring our ministry to the secret. I said to help On Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we we'll bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody have your right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water, and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election, eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said. Oh. And because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because so, some people were strong for good land. We'll be strong, man. We don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Glad to have you back. You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. In business, Edo State Governor Adam Sushomale says the state is yet to receive the $75 million World Bank loan recently approved for the state. Sushomale disclosed this in Benin during the colloquium organized by the state government to round off activities marking its seventh year in office. He said this clarification became necessary to instill confidence in the people that the state government's ability to pay salaries up to date is not based on the loan, but on prudent management of resources. Governor Schumerle noted that government and governance are not value-free, adding that the way forward is to focus on continued development of every sector of the economy. Members of the Consultative Committees of Regulators and Operators of the ECOWAS Regional Electricity Regulatory Authority will hold their sixth meeting on 7th and 18th of November 2015 in Accra, Ghana, as the launch of the West African electricity market draws near. Those specifically consider the status of the implementation of the ECOWAS Ministerial Directive and Organization of the Regional Electricity Markets issued in 2013. 
The directive provides the general framework for governing the regional electricity markets within the framework of the ECOWAS Energy Protocol. It also relates to the operations of the electricity market principles, such as the market design and phases, open access to the regional transmission network, and access by eligible customers, as well as the harmonization of cross-border contractual arrangements. And now to the foreign scene, three Palestinians have died from bullets wounds inflicted by Israeli troops. And two Israeli settlers have also been shot dead in the attack as unrest continues to grip Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Palestinian Authority's Ministry of Health disclosed that Israeli forces shot dead a 22-year-old Lafi Awad today in a village in Budrus in the central occupied West Bank. Local media reports reviewed that clashes have spread throughout Hebron and the surrounding villages. Today's killings come on the heels of more than six weeks of unrest with protest against Israel's ongoing occupation spreading throughout Israel and the Palestinian authorities. The president of the Iraqi Kurdish region, Masoud Bazani, has announced the liberation of the town of Sinja in the major operation against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL. Addressing the news conference, Bazani disclosed that the offensive led by the Iraqi autonomous Kurdish region's Peshmerga forces also involved U.S. air support and fighters from the Yazidi minority, a local Kurdish speaking community targeted in a virtual. ISIL campaign of massacres, enslavement and rape. He said any victory in any area will have a big impact on achieving victory in the remaining areas, pointing out that the liberation of Sinja will have a big impact on liberating Mosul too. About 7,500 fighters participated in the operation that began on Thursday. Speaking in Tunisia around the same time with Bazani, U.S. Secretary of State and Kerry said he is absolutely confident that the town will be freed in the operation by Kaddish Peshmerga backed by U.S. led airstrikes and ground supporters. Miami is the position the National League for Democracy NLD has won a landslide election victory. With more than 800 contested seats now declared, officials say Anson Kui's party has more than the two thirds it needs to choose the president and in decades of military backed rule. A quarter of seats automatically held by the military, which means that it remains hugely influential and under the constitution, Ms. Suki cannot become president herself. Despite this, the election is seen as the first openly contested poll in Miami, also known as Burma, in 25 years. The NLD, however, needs two more votes to reach the threshold required for a majority. Russia's state aviation authority has banned Egypt's national carrier from flying to Russia. Flights from Russia to Egypt are already suspended after a passenger plane crashed in the Sinai last month. All 224 people on board were killed, mostly Russian nationals. Egypt's air had been the only airline flying between the two countries and the move is to ensure it meets safety requirements. Sinai province, a group affiliated to Islamic State of Iraq, has repeatedly claimed it brought down Metrojet Flight 968 flying from the Egyptian Red Sea resort of Sham al-Sheikh to the Russian city of St. Petersburg. And now to sports. President Muhammad Buhari will receive the all Khan Crane FIFA and the 17 World Cup champions Golden Eaglets on November 29. Speaking in Abuja, the Director General of the National Sports Commission, NHC, Al Hassan Yakmut, said the President will receive the team alongside all the medal winners in international competitions, adding that the President will receive them alongside other medal winners on November 29 at the State House Abuja. Meanwhile, FIFA and the 17 World Cup winning coach Emmanuel Amunike stated that his major concern during the just concluded 2015 and the 17 World Cup in Chile was to make Nigerians happy. 
Meanwhile, Nigeria's Super Eagles and their Swaziland counterparts played out as scoreless during the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifying match at the Samhololo National Stadium in Lobamba today. Nigeria's head coach Sander Lee said this time opted for a centre-back pairing of Afi Ambrose and Godfrey Obabona with Sheikh Abdullahi and Alderson Echejile playing as full-backs. The Super Eagles from the outset pressed high up against the King's Shield of Swaziland but lacked the sharpness to open up the defence of Harris Bulanga's men. Tony Zabze was clearly the man pulling the strings for the King's Shield and in the third meeting he left fly from this time but his efforts was straight at Nigeria goalkeeper Carl Ikeme. Five minutes later, Lazio midfielder Ogeyo Nazi saw his free kick pumped away by Lala Webu on the Swaziland goal and Sylvester Igbono's rebound attempted forced the custodian of the horse into another save before Odin Igalo turned the loose ball F target to let the Southern Africans F the hook. And finally, the German football team were forced to change their hotel in Paris today after a bum scared a large reaccommodation ahead of the friendly against France later in the day. A police investigation was ongoing at the Hotel Morlito in the Place Western region of Paris with all rooms being checked for any signs of suspicious evidence. The world champions were headed to the Stade de France later on today to take on the Euro 2016 host in the first meeting since Germany eliminated France 1-0 in the quarterfinals of the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. And that's it on Cool TV Primetime News, but before we go, a quick recap of our top stories. President Muhammad Buhari and us three soldiers who sustained serious injuries and ongoing operations against Boko Haram with the Purple Hearts Medal for Gallantry. Also, a federal high court in Abuja summoned the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abu Bakr Salami to explain the security siege on the Abuja residence of former National Security Advisor Sambo Desuki. And finally, the Inspector General of Police Solomon Arase unveils the new look of Special Anti Robbery Squad at the launch of the Police Complaint Response Unit at the Force Headquarters, Abuja. Thank you so very much for staying with us tonight. I am Nena Nyama. Do have a lovely night rest.